you haven't eaten or slept. You need some food in your stomach. I can't manage. I think I'm gonna go round and see Sam. Kevin, don't. She threw you out last night. If you go round there now, it's only gonna aggravate the situation. But if I don't go, she's gonna think I don't care. Look, she knows that already. Leave her on her own. Look, I've gotta do something. Well, keep your head down, hey? <sighs> don't put pressure on her. I just wanna tell her how sorry I am. Look, haven't you said that already? Yeah. Well, leave it then. Drag myself off to work. I'll see you later. Oh, good morning, Kevin. Good morning. Hello, Emily. What brings you out so early? Noise. We've been up half the night. Oh, the new neighbours again? Yes. Music till 3 a.m. and now they're shouting at each other to get up, get your breakfast, get to school, get to work. Well, Percy won't be best pleased. Oh, he's waiting till it quiets down, then he's going back to bed. Well, that's not like Percy. No, it isn't. Well, sit down. I'll bring you something over. Thank you. Hey, give us some of what I've just had, girl. You can't beat the great British breakfast. Better than that continental muck Roy's going to be eating when he's off. What? French cuisine is second to none. I'll not go hungry. Is that where you're going? Oh, well, uh, not exactly, but I will be in the vicinity. Oh, it looks lovely. Yeah. I'm hoping a, a few prints will enhance the cafe, give it a bit of ambience. Yeah, and I'm all for that, whatever it is. I <laughs> hope you won't mind, Agri. Only be a minute. Oh, I'm used to it. <laughs> you carry on, Ray. Hey! where do you get that? What? That too! It's mine! It's the one that was nicked out of me van. You sure? Of course I'm sure. Can you give me a description? Yes, look, it's it's got a chuck on one end, right, and it's got an handle on the other with an on-off switch to turn it on and off. Well, you have to know better than that. Right, it's got paint where your thumb is, right, on the handle, and on the other side there's a big scratch where Jim dropped an hammer on it. Well, it could be yours. Of course it's mine. I'd know it anywhere. Where did you get it? I bought it off Mr Battersby. He said he had no use of it. I paid him £50. Oh, you got a bargain. It's worth 100 quid at least. Are you sure it's yours? I'm positive, Roy. Sally. What do you want? Well, I wanted to say welcome home. It's lovely to see you again. Is it? You know it is. I thought I knew a lot of things. Who my friends were, who my husband was. But it turned out I didn't. I've always been your friend, Sally. Hope I always will. My friend wouldn't have stood by and watched. I was miles away. You saw it happening. You did nothing. I did everything I could. Like what? Did you phone me? Did you write me a letter? Did you get in your car and drive over? I had words with Kevin. Great. I went to the woman's house. I told her, keep your claws out of him. And when that didn't work, you just put it to the back of your mind? I did not, Sally. Not for a minute. Well, you must have done. Because you said nothing to me. You spoke to Bill. You spoke to Kevin. You spoke to Natalie. You made yourself available to everybody except me. I wasn't important. Sally. I told you I could go round there now. Look, Mum, it's best if you just keep out of it. But they've got no right to keep him in there. Look, they'll do you all they want, all right? The law's on their side, isn't it? Yeah, they won't tell you anything anyway, Mum. You're quite happy to just forget about him, aren't you? Look, all he's got to do is tell him where he was. If he had an alibi, they wouldn't have even kept him overnight. The police do whatever they like. And you know, do you? I'll be back later. Yeah, right. see you later, Elizabeth. See, right. see you, all right? Hey! <whistles> Lovey, hurry up. I'm good all day, mate, you know? Excuse me, Mr Barlow. Can you give us a lift to school? No, Toya. I don't think I can. Oh, go on, I'll be late. Plenty of time to walk. And even if you go very slowly, you'll arrive earlier than usual. What a minute, all right? Bye, Coya. See you in assembly. No, you won't. It'll be sat in talks with Siggy. You better come up with some answers. Why? What are you going to do about Look, it? Look, I'm a tradesman. I need to work. There's no way I'm letting you nick my tools. I'm telling you, I didn't take your drill. How many more times do you want telling? But you sold it to Roy Cropper. I didn't take it. Oh, well, fair enough, then. If the police can't get you for stealing, they'll get you for handling. Right, clear off. I will, and you know exactly where I'm going. No, wait. No, love, I'm sorry. He's made his decision. Les didn't take your drill. Tell him who did. What? Tell him. I got it off our toy. The girl who's just gone to school? Yeah. She's 
not well. She's got a problem. Oh, don't go to the police. Don't tell on her. Your daughter stole it? Well, it's not something we're proud of. Les would rather you thought he took it. Why do you let her steal things? We don't! Oh, come on, sit down a minute. <sighs> We've had murders, we are. We've been up and down to school. It's been going on for months. I think she's being bullied. Hello. Kevin told us you were coming home. We're glad we've missed you. It's been quite a while since you've set foot in this shop. Yeah, well, a lot's happened, Maud. I've come to see if my job's still available. Oh, well, it's Maureen you have to discuss that with. She runs the place. I'll not be rushing back to Scarborough. My mum's well enough to look after herself now. But this last visit wasn't to do with your mother. I had to get away. It wasn't her fault. I can understand the state you were in. No matter what state you're in, you have to be behind this counter seven days a week. I'm sorry for letting you down. I need this job more than ever now. I won't have any time off, I promise. Sally, we've kept it open for you. You can start whenever you want. Thanks, Maureen. But if you and Kevin fall out again... We won't. We've split up for good. Sally, you don't mean that. I do. He's not living with me anymore. I've got to work. I need the money. Don't you want to try again? No. It's all over between us. He's got his life and I've got mine. I'd be happy to start work straight away. Yes, right. That's fine. Fine. Isn't it, Mother? I suppose so. Is me overall in the back? Yes, yes it is. She won't last. Please don't go to police. It, it might scare some sense into her. No, we're going to keep it in the family. Please. <sighs> Something will be done, eh? And it will. But not the police. All right, I'll give her one more chance. She goes to see this educational psychologist, you know, every week. School set it up and, well, they say she's making great progress. But, but it takes time. Yeah. Oh, but Mr Webster, please let it drop. It, it won't happen again. No. It was moving house. I said it had upset her. Yeah, I know. I should have listened. Look, what is the matter with you two? How do you expect her to stop thieving if you pass the stuff on for her? That were a mistake. She won't do it again. Honest. But will he? Well, of course he won't. How am I to know that? Look, you, you'll just have to trust me. You've got your drawback, haven't you? Yeah. Well, well, let's say no more about it. Please, Mr Webster. We'll be really grateful. <laughs> OK. Well, it's the last time. You just wanted my poster. What do you think? Low fat cheese dumplings. There's no such thing. Oh, there are. And they're horrible. Well, what are you recommending them for then? I'm not, you are. Well, I've never eaten one. You don't have to. We want the customers to buy them, not the staff. I don't think I've ever even seen one. Probably not, since it's one of our slower lines. But since we put these strips on your other posters yesterday, people have been coming in and asking for them by name. I'm not sure I like this. How do you mean? Well, it makes me look like I'm encouraging customers to buy things. You are. We all are. As soon as I unlock that front door, I'm encouraging people to come in and spend the money. No, but this is taking things too far. I'm not forcing them into their trolleys. No, but it makes it look like I am. No, no, you're just drawing attention to the product, that's all. I'm not a marketing executive, Curly. I just want a nice, quiet job. You've got one, so just sit down, smile sweetly as these low-fat cheese dumplings go sliding by and make Eric Furman very proud of you. I was taken for a ride, wasn't I? I'd say you were tricked by a con man. Some folk think I'm daft. Won't be a con man if he wasn't good at fooling people. Lying to him, you mean? Mm, I do. Not to mention stealing Bill Webster's drill. Well, he got it back. I didn't get my £50 back, though, did I? No. I, I can't let him cheat me, Gail. I, I'm as good as give him the money. Well, you could just write it off as experience. Why should I? I, I I'm a businessman. I've got to stick up for myself. I, I, I'm going to tackle him. He's a big man, Roy. 
Might be good with his fists. Hard ball violence. But physical or verbal. You missed your chance this morning. You could have gone round with Bill. Well, it's too late now. Well, we'll be quiet till dinner time. If you feel like facing him. If I want to take issue with a, with a criminal twice my size, no, I'll, I'll wait. I'll, I'll go when we're closed. <laughs> 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 so then, what would you love? <laughs> is he paying for it this time? Who let? No, he's left his money at home. We'll send him home to get it then. Oh, he'll settle up later. I don't get you, Gareth. You're more gullible than you look. I'm not saying something. Oh, he's all right. He's late. Tells a fine tale. Yeah, he must. That'll be £2.80. Again. The old fella's round there now. Seeing if they're going to let him out. Well, they'll have to, won't they? They haven't got any evidence against him. You've got to prove that, though, aren't you? No, the police have to prove he's guilty. Well, they can't hold him because of his previous form. They can't hold him for that long. He'll be out in no time. He will if he can find somebody who'll vouch for where he was Monday night. I can't. Didn't see him all evening. Neither did my mum or my dad. Someone would have done. Just ask around. something now. You've been gone three hours. Yeah, sorry about that. I kept me hanging around, messing me about. I said they're interviewing him. Maybe they were. Well, they're hardly going to interview him all day over a few cases of missing whiskey, are they? Didn't you see him at all? No, I didn't see him at all. They wouldn't let me. Said it was against the rules. So, has he been charged? No, they won't charge him yet. Not until they've checked out his alibi, will they? And when are they planning on doing that? I've no idea. Whenever they feel like it. They've nothing better to do. They can't just hold him for no reason. Police can do what they like, Mum. He's just another petty criminal. They're not going to believe a word he says anyway, are they? I believe him. Well, I don't know whether I do. Why? Well, your man O'Grady says that Stephen says he's got an alibi. I reckon he was with a wee girl on Monday night and she'll vouch for him. Well, was it? What's her name? He wouldn't tell me. He doesn't know. And that makes you think Steve's lying? Well, it wouldn't be the first time, would it? Do you know, you haven't got a good word to say about your brother, have you? Oh, it can be hard fighting our Steve's corner. I know, I've got the scars. He'd stick up for you! Well, if it suited him, he would, yeah. Two of a kind, then, aren't you? Me? Why? What have I done? Well, just because he messed up your little degree celebration, you won't give him the benefit of the doubt. Oh, and there is doubt, is there? You reckon he's reformed, do you? I reckon if you were any kind of a brother, you'd be out there in the streets right now. What, trying to find someone he was with Monday night? Yeah. Right, well, maybe I'll do that then. Or oh, then again, it might just be quicker to go and find his uh, known associates, the usual suspects, the one that always breaks into places with, eh? They'll know where he was, all right. Thank you. Oh. So will these dumplings make me big and strong and sexy again, then? Well, it depends what you're going to do with them. <laughs> well, it says boil them in water for 20 minutes. I can hardly wait. Your life lacks excitement, doesn't it, Des? There is nothing wrong with looking forward to a night in with a Fairman's frozen dumpling. Well, I wouldn't say they were the most delicious things you've ever tasted. Well, they're not nice, then? Well, let me know next time you see me. Frankly, I wouldn't have one near me. You mean this is a con, Alma? You've never tried them yourself? What? I don't know what Mike could do if I put one down in front of him. Well, there's no point in inviting the pair of you round for an evening meal, then, is there? Well, fortunately, my beloved is taking me out to a highly recommended restaurant. Yeah, those are highly recommended, no. <laughs> yes, but only by me, and I've never tasted one. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks. Cheers. Cheers. I know why you've come. I come to see if you're all right, Sally. You haven't. You've come to see if I'm going to take Kevin back. Look, you'll make your own mind up about that. I have no right to interfere anymore. Is he staying with you? Of course he is. So he didn't go to her, then? No. I suppose he will. He wants to be with you and the girl, Sally. Oh, yeah. He's sorry for everything he's done. You're bound to be on his side, Bill. But don't come round here telling me how sorry he is. He's the one who has to convince me, not you. 
But how can he if you won't speak to him? I don't even want to see him. I'm not interested in anything he has to say. <sighs> you must be so. Otherwise, where did you come back? I've come back because I live here. I work here. My friends are here. My house and my possessions are here. I'm not going to be thrown to one side so Kevin can have a good time with Natalie Horrocks. If he could turn the clock back, he would. Yeah, well, I wouldn't. I found out what he's really like. And I don't want him anywhere near me. He knows that, Sally. He'll stay away. He'll keep his distance. Yeah, well, you tell him from me to make sure he does. Hello, Roy. Mrs. Bishop. Oh, Mr. Barlow. All right. I'm about to do what I should have done this morning, and I can't say I'm looking forward to it. No? No. I hope he's going to be all right. Well, what's the problem? He's someone else the Battersby's have got on the wrong side of. Well, what on earth have they done? I mean, it's not like Roy to go thumping on doors. Oh, Mr. Battersby's cheated him out of £50. He expects to get it back? He feels he should try. I must say, I'm not even attempting to complain. It's that stupid looking bloke. Look, are you going to open the door or what? No, he's a right weirdo. So are you. And switch this thing off. I'm watching it. You're not? Les, tell her, will you? She won't do a flaming thing, I say. Just because I don't open the door. Right, I'll do it myself. Look! I've got enough of an headache without you banging me house down. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, I'd like to see Mr Battersby. Is he at home? Les! It's for you! Well, come in. You don't expect me to stand in the street and talk to you, do you? <clears throat> uh, thank you. You work in that cafe, don't you? Uh, yes, well, I'm, I'm part owner, actually. Part owner? Is that because you're only half there? Yeah. I, I've come about that drill you sold me, Mr Battersby. Have you? Yes. Apparently, it wasn't yours to sell. I parted with that in good faith. If you've lost out on the deal, hard luck. If it was a matter of luck, I would say no more, but I was conned. I didn't con you. You sold me stolen goods. There's nothing I can do about that. Right. In that case, you give me no option. I'll go to the police. Just a minute. Roy, isn't it? Roy Cropper, actually. He's a nerd, actually. Chuck him out. Look, Roy, don't go to the police. Bill Webster came round. We explained to him. He should have told you. Well, I haven't seen Mr Webster all day. The drill, it was stolen. But Les didn't take it. I would tell you did. I didn't! You can see the state she's in. She lives on her nerves. She doesn't know what she's doing half the time. There's nothing wrong with me! She's undergoing treatment. Bill Webster said he'd forget the whole thing. Go and ask him. He'll tell you the ins and outs of it. You're a liar! I never touched this lousy drill! We've had loads of problems with her as it is. If somebody upsets her, she just gets worse. She'll be screaming her head off all night now, thanks to you. M Mrs Battersby, it's really not my problem. Go and see Bill Webster. He'll explain. What are you telling that for? Because I am sick to death of it. Why did we move here? Oh, give it a rest, woman! You give it a rest, and you. I am sick to death of having people on me back. If it's not the school, it's the neighbours. I want some peace. No point blaming me. If you'd have kept your hands to yourself, he wouldn't be out there making a show of us. He's a nerd! Are you going to see to her? You don't take a blind bit of notice. How was I to know she nicked it? Where does a little lass like her get an electric drill? How come you've gone so high and mighty all of a sudden? It's not the first time she's brought something home. It's the first time you've been daft enough to sell it on to one of the neighbours. He's not a neighbour! As good as. Everybody in factory knows him. We get his sandwiches there. Want it out from his place? Well, you're not going to have to. Now get upstairs to your room out of his sight! No! I want to talk to your father. Now get lost! I won't! It's my house as much as yours! And would you like to be turfed out of it again? Because if you carry on like this, that's just what's going to happen. You can't have moan! Will you tell her? What's wrong with the girl? She's all right! Tell her I have had enough of being moved from house to house. 
I like this street and I want to stay here. We're staying here! Oh, yeah, we used to behaving like gangsters, we're not. She's off her head. We wouldn't be in this mess if you hadn't sold that drill. It's all your fault. And if we get moved, I'm telling you, Les, you'll be moving on your own. Frank exchange of views did no good. None at all. I can't say that I'm surprised. Well, at least you can go home and forget them. I shall have that racket all night. I feel sorry for you, Mrs Bishop. Something has got to be done. How come Maxime help? Steve MacDonald said she was with him that night. Me? You're clutching at straws, aren't you? No. Well, tell him, Maxine. Tell him what? Tell him you went with Steve on Monday. Well, yeah. I mean, I saw him in the robes at lunchtime. But you didn't see him in the night? No. No. I went with him. I didn't see him at all. Yeah. I thought you were in Scarborough. I was. I'm back. I'm sorry. I wanted to see Kevin. Well, he's not here. It's just that the garage seems to have shut early. Does it? Do you know where he is? No. Right. Well, I'm sorry for disturbing you. Disturbing me? Yeah. You might find Kevin at his father's flat. He lives there now. He's moved out and he won't be back. Natalie? Yeah? 